Hi everybody, this is Mike Williams and we're going to do another guitar video. This one is going to work on some high frets beyond the 12th fret that are resulting in some fretting out at the E and B string, most notably the E string, the first string, the high E. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. And in my last video on how to upgrade your chips in, I had explained that uh, with the radius on a guitar, and it does happen to Les Pauls or Les Paul style guitars like this one. This is an Epiphone Les Paul 100. It's a beautiful guitar. It is uh, very modified. It's not the same one you would buy in the store if you went to Guitar Center, for example. Uh, but with this guitar, we are having some fretting out with the high E string beyond the 12th fret. So let me just uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. The action on this guitar is set pretty low. It's about uh, a little over 2 30 seconds here at the 12th fret on the low E and just under 2 30 seconds, maybe 1 and 3 quarter 30 seconds here at the high E. Um, we want the guitar to have low action. One of the ways that a lot of guitar shops try to get around this problem is they will raise the, uh, the action on the guitar, which means that they will raise the, the height of the bridge. And of course, you know, that's one solution, but it's not the optimum solution. What we'd like to do is to keep the action low and see if we can get rid of that fretting out. So let me just show you exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, here we are at the 17th fret. I think it's the 17th, 13, 14, 15, yep, 17th fret. And I'm going to hit this E string. And you can see that sounds good. Now let's bend it up. You hear that? Well, it's what you don't hear, actually. There's no ringing out or sustain on the string. You hear it there? It's ringing out. And then if the player is, the guitarist is bending that string up, that's a fretting out. Okay, so the problem that we have is that when we bend up on this string here, there's a fret ahead of it that is high. And it's getting in the way. So it's not allowing the string to oscillate. That's what's going on. Okay, so let me pause the video for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate and figure out which fret or frets is getting in the way beyond that fret. So stay tuned. All right, so we're back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty fret rocker and I'm going to start here with the 12th fret and just hold the fret rocker very lightly, just like I showed you in the last video. Don't push down on it, just see if you can move it. So all the frets there are even, that's good. Just move it over one, and you're testing three frets at a time. Always three frets at a time, because when you have rocking, it's the middle fret. Think of it like a seesaw. And if it rocks back and forth, that means the middle fret is the one that's the culprit. We have a little bit of rocking right here. Not too bad. Nothing here. And that'll happen sometimes where it will rock on one part of the fret, but not on another. So in this case, it's rocking right here on the 15th fret, just a wee bit, but not in the center. But it's not a lot of rock, so I don't think I'm going to be too worried about that one. Move it over one fret, doing three at a time. Minor, minor rocking there, very minor. Okay, so we're gonna keep checking. There's no rocking there. And again, we're checking three frets at a time. And let me just make sure I do that again, do it right. I had to flip the rocker around. Okay, so here's the fret that might be the culprit because here is the 17th fret, and when I bend up, it's very possible that it's the next fret up that's getting in the way. There you go. See that rocking? There. There. All right, so basically this fret, the fret right in front of the 17th, the 18th fret, is most likely the problem. And I'll move over one more and see what we get. 
That's good, that's good, that's good. So, I'm going to guess that the fret that's causing the problem is the 18th fret. It's too high. So again, because it's too high, when I bend that note up, this fret in front of it is too high. It's getting in the way. So let me uh, take the strings off the guitar, and uh, I'll start the work on filing it down. I'll show you how to file down the fret and how to crown it and hopefully get the guitar so that uh, when we're playing lead guitar up above the 12th fret, especially here, um, we're not getting that fretting out. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so the strings are off the guitar, and there's a little trick that you can use or that you can apply, and it's to take a capo and put it midway through the neck and, and loosen the strings down here just enough so that you can pull them through, and then with that slack, you can take them out from the tailpiece. In this case, we have a Bigsby, so the tailpiece is right here. Um, but on a guitar without a Bigsby, uh, there would be a regular tailpiece, and you can use the same approach. Um, it's better than having to restring the whole thing all over again. So anyway, so what I did, if you take a look right here, you can see some of the magic marker lines. This is the fret that is high, so I'm going to file it down, and I'll show you how to do that. I did it in my last video, do it yourself, how to upgrade your chips in. I think that's what it was called. But uh, I'm, I'm going to take my time here and just dedicate this video to uh, filing down and leveling this fret so that you can really get a good understanding of how to do it. Alrighty, so let me just tape that uh, fret off so that we don't damage the fretboard, and I'll be right back. Remember now, when you do this work, let me see if I can get this in there video camera frame here. You want to use these small files and again like I had mentioned in my last video uh, these files are made by Nicholson. You can get them at the Home Depot and I think they're 12-15 bucks. Well worth the price and you get six files. And these are the files I'm going to use. You don't want to use large files because they get cumbersome especially when you're this far up the neck. There are other frets that are close by and you run the risk of scraping the other frets or possibly even doing damage if you're not really careful to the body. So you don't want to do that. So if you're using these smaller files, you're much better off. All right, so we're going to get started here. And just make sure when you do the taping that you don't tape over um, the frets to the left and to the right because you're going to need to check the rocking. And if you have tape over the frets to the left and the right of the fret you're working on and you're actually raising the frets on the side and that's going to throw everything off. So with this fret, just to double check it, yep, there's the rocking. Right, so it's all the way across the fret. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my file and start filing down the fret. And when you do this, again, light strokes. You, you do not want to lean into the filing. You'd be surprised at how quickly a fret will file. and check it very often. Still rocking. Not so much down here though. Starting right about here. So again, you're going to take your file Gentle strokes. Let's take a look at where we're at. It's getting there. See, the problem with this fret was the highest part of the fret, where it rocked the most, was basically in the center. And because the radius or the concave shape of the neck goes this way, it's arched, concave, 
if this is high, that makes the situation worse. It exasperates the possibility that you're going to have fretting out because when you bend the note up, you're bending it up toward the highest part of the fretboard, the highest part of the radius, and then you have fret that's also high. So that's why it becomes problematic. Let's take a look at where we're at. All right, we're getting there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to file it down so that we get to the point where the fret rocker does not rock. And so let me do that, and I'll come right back as soon as I have it perfectly level, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about as far as the rocker not rocking. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, so we're almost there. I just wanted to show you one other thing. You can see that there are parts of the fret now that are even or level. A little bit of rocking right there, very, very slight. But from that point down, there is no rocking. Same thing up here now. Very slight. Virtually none here. So most of it is in the center still, but it's, it's way down. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because, again, you could have situations where a part of the fret becomes very level relative to the fret to the left and the right. There's no rocking. Um, in this case, we have it down here. It's level, um, pretty much up here, although I'll work on this a little bit more, but it's pretty much level. And then we still have it a little high here. So this is a process in which it's, it's important to understand that as you do this, it's not all going to level at the same time. It's, that's not going to happen. So you have to pay a lot of attention to just filing some and then checking with your fret rocker and filing and checking, filing and checking. So it's a continuous process. All right, so let me uh, finish off this fret here and get it level and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so we have the fret completely level now. There's no rocking. Yep, okay, that's good. All right, so I'm gonna check in front of it no rocking. And I did notice this fret, two ahead of it, does have some rocking in the very center right here. So I I'm gonna think I'm going to fix that also while I'm at it. I won't take you guys through that, but um, I'll do it after I finish this one up. All right, so this one's all level now. And again, you're just going to take it, you know, step by step. You're, do not rush through it. And when you file it, of course, the top of the fret is flat now, and you don't want it to be flat. It has to be rounded, uh, because when a string plays, you want it to hit the apex of the rounded part of a fret, and that's what keeps your guitar, the intonation, um, where it's supposed to be, and you know you don't have a bunch of weird sounding notes as you go up the fretboard that'll happen if you have a lot of uh, frets which are worn or you know if you don't um, round them so I'm going to do that now and um, so just give me a second I'm going to reposition um, the camera so that uh, I can work and you can take a look now what I do is I take my file and I do a round type of stroke like this. And the reason I'm doing that is just to get the, the process of rounding the, the fret started. And the crowning tool will do this also, but I just find that this helps things along and moves a little quicker. Now what you want to do is you want to take 600 or 800 grit sandpaper and just want to work the sides the sides of the fret so that you can round it both sides don't forget both sides Now 
It's looking pretty good. Okay, so let me get my crowning tool. Which I should have had out before I started this segment of the video, but here it is. And again, just like last time, what you now notice now you have again a radius, which means it's concave. So you take your tool. Gently, do not press or lean into it. The reason is because this is a file also. And if you do too much pressing, leaning, you get too aggressive with it, you're, well, you're going to file that fret down and you're going to make it a low fret now. And that's going to create a whole other set of issues for you. Well, that looks really good. I'm looking at it now and this is rounding nicely. And again, I do it until I can feel the crowning tool just moving freely. There's no burrs that are catching it or any of those types of things. Yeah, it looks real good. All right, so the next thing I do, these are micro mesh sticks and this is 1500 grit and you can see it's printed on the stick itself. And so what I then do is basically start buffing it up. So these grits are so fine that you're not really going to run the risk of filing a fret down. But what it does do is it smooths it out. This is 1800. I don't know if you can see that, but right in the center of the stick. So the first one was 1500. This is my personal preference, by the way. I mean, you can experiment on your own with which sticks you like better to do the work. Yeah, it's looking good. The next one is 3200. Now we're really starting to get into the very, very fine grits. And this is what you want. You know, people go down to places like Guitar Center to have this work done and, you know, they don't do the work as fine as this. This is why it's important. If you can learn to do this work yourself, and you get competent at it, you get good at it, you'll never bring your guitar down to a place like that again, or to any luthier for that matter, for this type of work. And don't get me wrong, luthiers are wor worth their weight in gold. Um, there's certain repairs, obviously, that you're not going to take on yourself. Um, they're too, too, too complex, but for this type of work, if you could do it yourself, you're gonna get a nice job done. This is 6,000 now, so this is really gonna start polishing it up. And there's my clock in the background again. It's playing a Beatle tune. I've had that clock for years. Okay, you can see that this fret is really, really shining up now. And I'm looking at it and it looks better than the other frets. As far as smoothness goes. Okay, so the last grit that I use is 12,000. This is a very, very, very fine grit. And essentially, it's a finishing polishing grit. And you get these micro mesh sticks, you can get them on Amazon. There we go. So that's looking excellent. Okay, so I think that fret's done. Let's just take our tool, our fret rocker. Oh yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna work on that other fret too, and then I'm gonna wrap up. I'll restring and hopefully we solve the problem. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we have the strings back on the guitar. And when we started this project, it was the 17th fret that was giving us a problem right here. Here's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And the string that was 
fretting out was the high E string. The, um, the B string was fine. Uh, but many times what will happen is, if you have the situation, it will be the E or the B or E and the B. But in this case, our B string was okay. So let's just take a look now. So what we did was we fixed the fret in front of it, and I also fixed the fret down here. And let's just see. There we go. No fretting out. See, the string now is ringing out. Bending it. Excellent. So we fixed the problem. And we fixed the problem without having to adjust the action. The action is still the same as it was when I started the project. On the 12th fret, we had roughly 1 and 3 quarter, 30 seconds, just below 2 30 seconds on the high E string of the 12th fret right here. And we had a little more than 2 30 seconds, maybe 2 and a half, 30 seconds right here on the low E string at the 12th fret. So the action remained the same. All we did was we fixed the fret that was problematic. Now, again, I'll say this, and I'm not taking a knock at these repair shops and some of these luthiers, but you'll bring a guitar down and it's fretting out, and their solution is, is to raise your action. When a lot of times the problem is a fret that is just a tad too high, and all you need to do is to level it. And once you do that, the problem goes away. Okay, so I hope that helped you guys out. And uh, again, I'll leave the comments open for anybody who wants to comment. I will be filtering the comments and eyeballing them. And as I explained in the last video, that's because there are some people that um, they can't behave themselves. So they spend their time writing knucklehead comments. So I'm just going to strip those out. And those comments that come through, uh, you know, that uh, bring value to the conversation will be posted. Okay. All right, you guys, uh, take care, and I will be having another video coming out probably within the next two weeks or so. I'm going to upgrade another chips in. This one is a, a gold top, and we're going to be putting a Bigsby on it and a couple of other things, and I'll take you through that. All righty? So take care and have a great day.